So hi everybody and welcome back to the C++ tutorial series for absolute beginners. This is video 41 and in this video we are talking about operators again. We extend our knowledge about operators and here are the operators which we know already and here are the operators which we are going to talk in this video. But before we talk about these operators, let me uh, talk about an array and how to initialize an array with default values first because I forgot that to tell you in our exercise. I create here fast an array, my array, and I initialize it with 10 values. And you can see this is just a declaration of an array. And the slots here has now random values and we don't want that in general. So what we do is we write here an assignment operator. We write here and curly braces zero and this one. And now all the slots here has the value zero. And careful, don't uh, confuse this curly braces with the other version of an array in my other array, my other array, which has nothing in it if you write for example oops here if you write nothing in it and write this curly braces then that means this wait let me see where are the curly braces oops yeah when you write the curly braces that means this will be automatically filled by the compiler with the elements which you are creating here for example if i write now here zero this both are not the same. Very careful about this one. This one on top means I initialize this array all the 10 slots with zero and this one means I create an array just with one element which is zero. And to check this let's uh, use our debug which is all time helpful. Let's start this. It jumps here and now we see at the start of the line all random number are there because it is at the start, not here at the end. It must go through. So how it goes through when I go here on top and say step over. Now this array has all the values 0, 0, 0. I can use also my mouse, hover over the variable name and then you see also the values and I can click uh, down this drop down to see all the slots. This was called initialization with default values. Perfect. But this one, let's go. Uh, we are at the start of the second one. You see, this one has also a random number in it. Now I hover with my mouse in it, and now we can't see anything here right now because it jumped out to another place. But when you go with your mouse again over this one, hover over it, and click over it, you see this array has only one slot, which is zero, and has the value zero. Okay, careful about this one uh, when you initialize arrays or you create arrays with elements with the initializer here. That said, uh, we will train this anyway a little bit more in the future. But that was that what I have forgotten to tell you in the exercise. And now we continue with operators. So operators we have learned already some and we use them already and what we are going to learn now are this new assignment operators oh this is the program let me go here fast and here you can see these are the assignment operators the only assignment operator which we learned so far was really this equal sign we assigned there something and we assign from the right side to the left side most time. And now we are going to learn all this other assignment operator. And very important note is here, this assignment operator are very similar to this arithmetic operator. This uh, what you learned in school plus minus uh, multiplication division and uh, modulo uh, because they are more or less a shortcut for uh, yeah, for a calculation perhaps, but not only calculation because this is called assignment operator, not assignment operator for calculations. That's very important here. And 
But to understand this, let me make you some examples here. So let's go here on top and let's start with this. And probably I will not show you all because they are they are all the same principle. If you understand this one, you understand all the other ones too. But let's get started. So first of all, we see we have here one variable, a second variable. And you see this is very bad in programming. At least we are not using this kind of crap variable names because we have no clue what it says. We are creating real variable names like my first number. Now I know what it is. I initialize it with a default value, in this case also my second number, number, and we initialize it again with a default value and free. So we have here, they have two variables, we have created two variables, and we have created even well default values, perfect. Then we go to the next line, and I said, this line of code, what you see here, this assignment operator is just a shortcut for, uh, for example, a plus multi <clears throat> for a plus calculation. So, uh, for example, I calculate these two numbers, uh, and instead of writing a long way, I can write it in a short way. But we start with the long way. So, what is the long way? Uh, the long way would be my first number this is this first number here then you say then is equal or in this careful this one is an assignment operator but we assign the result of my first number plus my second number okay we did this perfect oh why we're well, not almost i have to write here a semicolon as well so this one is the long way. And now they use just the short way, which means they say you take just your first number, the first variable, it's here, and then you use the shortcut plus equal, plus equal, and then you use your second variable instead of writing all this again. So here, just the second one my second number and you see this line of code is now shorter and yes that's it there is no more this operator what you see here or all, all are just shortcuts and we have to learn to use the shortcuts and to understand the shortcuts so because this will come in programming much times because uh, programmers are lazy they try to shorten all what they can and yeah this is one of these uh, examples and let me show you the results here if this is uh, true so how i make this so for example std c out and then i write here oops i write here my second my first actually number and now i can show First, let's start with our first number to print this one out. So I have to deactivate my code here with a comment, very easy. And then I print this out and I can see it is 10, right? What we expected. And now I comment my long way and now I use my short way and save this one, start this one. And you can see it's also 10. So Indeed, this is just a shorter way to write this long way and no more and no less. So here, when we go on, I will not go on now with all the examples. I think you get uh, the idea. The principle is all time the same. And here they use just a minus. Here they use just a multiplication. In this place here they use a division at this place and here a shortened end and here they use a modulo and if you don't know modulo right now because um, perhaps you don't have learned it right now but later you will learn it in school modulo means more or less it's similar to division but they are interested in the reminder and if you don't know it you should uh, watch this online read it it's not difficult it's really 
The principle is not difficult. Use cases, of course, you can find all time difficult ones and easy one. And perhaps I should show you a very easy example here of Modulo. And the rest you will watch online and read online. What I say, Modulo is very easy. For example, I have here my two numbers, seven and three. <clears throat> if I divide them normal, uh, let's say with this one, I would get normally something like 2.33 and so on. But if I use modulo, I'm not interested in the result. <clears throat> I'm interested in the reminder. And what does this mean, reminder? And let me show this fast. So in elementary school, you probably learned something like that. Seven divided. Oh, let's make it. Let's make it this way. A little bit more this way. So in elementary school, you, you learn something perhaps to calculate like this. But there are different ways, of course. And well, perhaps you learned this way, perhaps not. So you said seven divided by three is two. The remainder, remainder is one. And then you said the remainder, we take and write it down here to one, add a zero. And then we divide this again by three anyhow. And because we take a zero, we have to make here a comma. And then we write this here behind, right? Something similar like that or different. There are different ways to learn <laughs> basic uh, things and then you would go on and then you would say okay uh, three then you divide seven by three again and say it's again reminder one and then you would go on so ten by three and it's again you would write this one here and then you would say seven by three is again uh, um, um, seven by three is again two reminder one and so on. So you are using all time this reminder, right? Uh, in when you learned in early stage school, this thing. And Modulo actually is only interested in the reminder at the at the first time. What I mean with that, you say, let's say here, you would continue with division. But if this is a modulo, you stop here already. So it's very easy. 7 uh, modulo 3 is 2. Remainder is 1. And our result is then... Uh, um, this one is actually wrong to state it, but I want to show you what I mean. The result is actually then 7, uh, seven modulo 3 is then one because it is only interested in the reminder at the first time so that's it here in division you would continue to get the decimal points if you are using modulus you stop here and say okay this one is the reminder this is my result of my modulus and like i said Read this online <laughs> with math explanation I made here. Uh, probably a very crappy explanation, but it's very easy. And with that said, I think we will stop here because all these other ones you can try and train a little bit. Write first the long version, then write the short version, and that's it. Then you know exactly these new operators. And with that said, I stop here. And I think we will go on a little bit with operators in the next video too, because there are some other which are interesting. And see you there. Bye.